Hi year ones, it's Wednesday, a wonderful Wednesday, almost well-being time soon um, this afternoon. I'm hoping that you have enjoyed your lovely walks yesterday because we will be needing whatever work you did yesterday for today. So when you've got your resources ready for today, especially your learning partner, we are going to begin. So today we are going to practice writing our clinics and just to remind ourselves, we are going to remind ourselves what a kenning is. So a kenning is a two word phrase describing an object. So it could be a metaphor that refers to something be being the same as something else to create an image or give us a clue in our head. Another definition of a kenning is that it is a poem made up of riddles um, or several lines of kennings to describe something or someone, or person, animal, creature, or even an, an object. Okay, so that is a, just a little reminder of what kennings are. And we looked at some examples yesterday. Now, yesterday you went on a sensory walk, and if you didn't get to do that, that's absolutely fine. You can just make a list of animals that you would like to write about. Okay. So it's not a problem if you didn't get to go on the walk. Just make a little list of the animals, your favourite animals or favourite objects that you would like to write about. It could even be a person. It could be your mummy, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your grandma, your grandpa, anybody that you really, really love and care about as well. Okay. Now, you've got your list in front of you. And if you haven't made one, you can make one now. And then you are going to pick or choose one of those items or objects or persons in your list and write a kenning about. Okay? So, before we go on to actually writing, practice writing our kenning, we are going to look at what a kenning needs to have. A kenning starts with capital letters on every line. So that is absolutely essential. Every time you start a new line in your kenning, you start with a capital letter. You must have finger spaces between each word or else your words will get jumbled up and they won't make sense. You use nouns and verbs. Now remember, a kenning is kind of describing. It's a lot different way of using adjectives to describe your noun. Okay, a person, a place or a thing also tells you what the noun can do so it uses verbs remember our hammer where we hammer those verbs okay at the end of each of your kenning line you need a comma okay that shows me that you've got something more coming another clue to give me and then at the end of your poem when you finish at the end of your poem you do me a big big beautiful full stop. Now, I say big, but you're not going to draw a big fat circle, are you? A little visible dot is really important. I say big because it's quite important to show me that your poem has finished. And finally, checklist number five, you need to have clues about the person or animal you're writing about. So think about the clues that you are going to use about the person or animal you're writing. What can they do? What particular things do they have? Features it might have. It might be that your mummy might have long curly hair. It might be that they've got beautiful blue eyes. I don't know, but you need to think about what they have. Okay, now before you go off, I would like to write a kenning for you to show you what it, I expect, okay? Um, but I'm going to show you a picture of the thing I'm going to write about. Now this is a beautiful dog, okay? And his name is Roger. He's a lovely pet. Um, and we're going to write a kenning about him and he's someone I chose. It's a he. He's in a lavender farm. He loves running around and chasing um, um flowers, butterflies, bees, you name it, he absolutely loves it. He loves being outdoors. So I know that about him. He's also a very faithful dog. He likes to be around his family a lot. 
He also eats a lot. He loves eating chicken. Okay, but that's something I know about him as well. He also likes to lick his toes. I mean, I, I mean paws, not toes. He likes to lick his paws. I don't know why he does that, but he does that a lot. Something some dogs do, I guess. So, he likes chicken. He licks his paws. He likes to go on long, long, long walks. He likes to chase butterflies. Okay? And more, actually, I know one more thing. He loves to snore, and he snores really loudly when he sleeps. Honestly, he does. He goes, <laughs> pretty loud. That was my impression of his snore. So I know these facts about him. So what I'm going to do is keep these facts in my mind. And when you're practicing your kenning today, you might want to jot these as notes in your um, notebook before you start writing. What are the facts that you already know about your person or your object or your animal? Okay. Now, there is a particular pattern that kennings follow. So I'm going to write my kenning. I'm going to choose my font. Do, 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 do. Okay. Hopefully that won't change halfway through. So, I'm going to go loud barker. Remembering to start with my capital letter. Remembering my um, finger space. Now, he's not a loud barker, sorry. He's a loud snorer. I'm going to use my phonics, remembering my sounds, snorer, uh, snorer, 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 okay, loud snorer. I'm going to look at my checklist here, it tells me that I need a comma at the end of each line, so I do a little comma, okay. Then I'm going to do my enter key. Do you know what I'm going to do here, ones? Just pausing the video for a moment. I'm just going to do a little editing on my screen and I'll be right back. There we are. I'm back. What I did is I got rid of the lines because I wanted you to see my poem clearly. So, got my next line. And remember, the poem does not say, you don't write a full sentence, he can snore loudly. Mm -mm. That's not what I want to do. I am actually saying what he. I'm actually using the verb and adding the er suffix at the end, okay? Because it tells me that some that's something that he does. Okay, he's a loud snorer, okay? So my next floor. Oh, he's a chicken eater. So sound talk. My chicken ch ick e n chicken ch ick n Chicken, chicken, chicken eater. Do you see what I'm doing? And with my comma, do my enter. What else does he do? Pour liquor. I'm gonna get my phonics out. Mm. Or pour finger space. U e k a stop because that is the end of my kenning. Is there anything I have forgotten? Mm -hmm. I've got loud snorer comma. I remember that. I've got chicken eater comma. I have not used any sentences. I'm using two word phrases remember. Only two words. No more. Two, how can I put that into two words? If you've got a big sentence, how can you put it into two words? Okay. Loud snorer. Chicken eater. I'm going to read through. Poor liquor. What have I forgotten, year ones? I have forgotten my capital letter. I need to do a big capital because I need to start with a capital letter on each line and I've ended with a full stop, okay? Today, you are making notes of the facts that you already know. Remember, it is only a two-word phrase telling me clues about what your person, creature or animal or object is, okay? So what you're going to do 
is you are going to have a go at practicing your kenning, writing your kenning. And when you've finished, you are going to read it out loud to your learning partner and they have to guess what it is. So don't show them your list just yet. Okay. When you are done writing, practicing your kenning today, you are done for the day. All right. Well, I will see you again on Friday because tomorrow is World Book Day and we have got some exciting things planned for you. So have fun today and I will see you on Friday. Bye for now.